All right, so welcome uh, everyone. I'm gonna do a little discussion tonight on uh, bicycle frame stiffness and why frame stiffness matters. Uh, what I'd like to get into, I'm gonna be getting into some topics on um, resonant frequency. We're gonna talk about um, fundamental period of vibration. If you don't have some sort of science background, uh, it can. I will try my best to keep it uh, as simple to understand as I can possibly make it. It's a very complicated topic and I'm making this video just as a way to to contribute to the um, cycling community in a more scientific way. Uh, I think there are some really excellent people and folks out there who are doing a lot to make the cycling world um, more advantageous, more interesting for all of us. So without further ado, um, let's get into the topic at hand. I'd like to introduce you to this discussion that Jan Hein recently had um, podcast. And before we get into that podcast, I want to show you this image that is on their website. And it is a, set, a test setup here, they've got a bicycle frame in a jig and they're pulling down with a known weight on the bottom bracket. This thing over here is kind of their measuring stick. So what they're saying is if we know a with a known weight um, and a, the ability to measure, we can measure the deflection, the load displacement as we would call it, of the bike frame. And with that we can calculate the, def the stiffness of the frame. Now keep in mind this frame is the stiffness of this particular setup only measures the stiffness of the frame itself. It doesn't account for the wheel stiffness or the fork stiffness or the tire sidewall stiffness or all the other stiffnesses that go into an actual bike frame. Um, so keep that in mind. Also you got to realize the saddle and the seat post are part of the stiffness equation because um, part of resisting the torsion of the torsional forces applied to the frame are the boundary conditions and those boundary conditions are obviously the two tires but also the saddle itself is contributing to one of the boundary uh, conditions for resolving the uh, the forces in the free body diagram so anyway we don't have to get too far into that what I wanted to talk what I wanted to do is play some of this podcast so you can kind of hear what they're talking about um, so let's go to that and they did a really nice job here on this podcast. So I'm going to go ahead and start playing that. And we can um, we'll listen in. And I'm going to bring in some other topics while, while they're discussing to kind of overlay this a little bit and to create maybe another. Um, in the last 20 years, to create there some more had understanding been, of what is going I think, on. Uh, a drive to always stiffer. And now I think that has peaked and passed. So this is the intro. I might skip through some of this because it's, it is, while it's interesting, you guys can go listen to this on your own if you want. So, Getting the stories behind the story. So let's the skip ahead. As far as what people are uh, paying attention to is rolling resistance, which, as you mentioned, we discussed in an earlier podcast in uh, episode 9. Okay, so there's um, some background. So, I mean, of those metrics. Let's try um, to get to the, we'll but, skip ahead. Know, in terms of mixed feelings about that sort of thing. I mean, like if you just take any bike and kind of do the classic stand next to it and push down on the pedal and flex it sideways and let go, it's not like the bike propels itself forward. Um, but Jan, I mean, you, you've got a really popular blog. Um, and, uh, you know, this topic actually dates back to a, a post that you put up in late 2014. And you've even given this phenomenon a name, uh, you know, you called it planing, you know, kind of related to what happens in boats. So, you know, for the benefit of our listeners who haven't read the post, um, and we'll post a link to that uh, that post on, on the site here, but for people who haven't read the post, could you, you know, would you mind describing to people kind of how you think planning works and what it is? Yeah, it's really interesting. It goes back actually 10 years. Um, we at Bicycle Quarterly test a lot of bikes, and we test them for at least 200 miles. So they're really, we feel that, in order to test the bike, it needs to become sort of our own bike where we ride it exclusively for quite a while, take it on different rides until. We okay, so before we listen to Jan talk about this, let's just come to this uh, blog that he posted. 
And this blog is where he demonstrates his idea on frame flexibility and storing that energy as a spring. And as you can see, he has these finite, these models of a bike frame where he shows these different degrees of freedom and these different forces being applied to the frame and talks a little bit about how that flex, how you pedal into the frame, you pedal, you, you store energy into the frame, and then as you release that energy from the pedal, meaning your bike, you go towards the up stroke on the pedal, that, that energy continues to rebound and cause the, the bike to want to move forward. So that's sort of this, the spring theory of this idea of planing. Now, what I want to do is bring in another potential um, uh, explanation for why a flexible bike might climb faster, and that is, and that topic is called um, resonance. Now, with a bicycle, the reason why resonance is um, a applicable here is because when you're pedaling, you're pedaling at a kind of a steady, steady rate. And uh, that would be the cadence of the pedal stroke. So how many times does the pedal go around per minute, per second? You know, however you want to measure it, it is a conti continuous um, input. Now those inputs are alternating back and forth. And so those forces are being applied as a, an oscillating system. And so we need to look at, what we need to look at is um, for this discussion, to layer onto what he is, we need to look at that idea of oscillations, oscillating systems. So let me go back and keep playing this for a minute, and then I'll do some research on oscillations. We're really oscillations. getting in tune with it, just like an owner would. You know, your new bike, it's great today, but really you'll only discover what it can do, and you'll get confident on it, and you'll tune into its handling and everything after a couple of weeks on the bike. That's what we do. And so then we found that we couldn't really explain why some bikes felt better than others. And we had this reference bike, which was just, you know, a very, very nice bike that we rode and we're lucky that our... Okay, so I pulled up resonance on Wikipedia. And basically, resonance is a phenomenon in which a vibrating system or external force drives another system to oscillate with greater amplitude at specific frequencies. So the specific frequency is the input, and that is um, our pedal cadence. The vibrating system is the bike flexing back and forth as we're pedaling. And the amplitude is how much of that energy is being rebounded back into making it easier to pedal the bike, more or less. I mean, there's maybe other ways to explain that, but that's kind of a, in a nutshell and a very simplistic way to look at it. Um, you would have what is known as resonance, meaning the material, the, the structural system has a natural period of vibration and the, the input forces are being applied at a period of vibration that closely matches that of the system's own natural period of vibration. Now, natural periods of vibration, just to, to be clear, there are different modes of vibration. You know, you have the, the fundamental mode of vibration, which is it's the first mode shape that would occur when a system starts to um, vibrate. Second order or higher order modes are responses at higher frequencies. There's many, there's an infinite number of modes of vibration, but those ones become less relevant as they become more and more in, in higher and higher states. The fundamental mode of vibration is the most relevant one that so anyway let's go back to the podcast our two testers a lot of ways that people sort of subjectively gauged frame stiffness was to kind of do the classic you know stand next to it and push down on the pedal and just watch the frame you know watch the bottom bracket sway back and forth you know the the frame flex that that we're talking about here it i don't know the answer but i think it's the, the, i think the idea of we get to a the spring important storing thing. energy and returning it when you are not necessarily putting out the most power um like to me, and certainly in, in concept, that seems valid. But when you were when you actually just look at a bike and 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 do that sort of thing, I mean, how can motion in that sort of way equate to energy that is then transmitted into the drivetrain? How, how would that work? Yeah, that's an interesting question, and I can tell you, I don't know the answer. 
but uh, there have been some finite element analysis uh, models of bikes that show that if you flex the bottom bracket and then you release it, it basically pulls the chain forward, just like uh, if you pedal. So that flex can come back. And from our experience of riding on the road, it seems that it depends on where the bike flexes. Some places you don't want the bike to flex, other places it's beneficial. Now, you know, bikes obviously are not any sort of new invent. All right, let, I just want to jump in, interject here quickly. So this this comes back to, I think what we need to, to really understand is understanding the resonance that's taking place. The the stiffness of the bike is is all of the bike as one system. Um, so there's the wheels, the tires, the frame, all of that creates some some flexibility. Now, if that flexibility, if you take that flexibility and you were to determine the fundamental period of vibration of that flexible system, which can be calculated, and you determine the first mode and the second mode if you want, and the third, you can go as a high order, as, as many orders of uh, magnitude as you want the th the main thing is is that you account for those flexibilities so you could do a theoretical model where you try to calculate it out based on defining some boundary conditions or you can come up with an empirical model where you just take a bike you load it with a known force you calculate the um, the, the, the display or you measure the displacement and then from that proximate um, stiffness for that bike and then with the stiffness, you're able to calculate the fundamental period of vibration because you can measure the mass of the system. And there's a very simple equation uh, where it, you assume it's just like a, uh, you, you treat it like a, a single mass kind of oscillator. And there's a formula for that. It's somewhat, something like 2 pi times the square root of um, m over k, something, so, something like that. So anyway, you come up with your fundamental period of vibration, and you see what that is. Now, the input is what will give you your resonance. And so the input frequency has to match the fundamental period of vibration, fundamental frequency. And that is pretty easy to calculate. We already know most riders pedal around 90 to 100 RPM. And so you can quickly come up with a period of vibration of that, which is basically... 0.65 seconds. That's the period of vibration. Or the frequency is 0.65 seconds. So that's every time the pedal comes around is 0.65 seconds if you're pedaling at um, 95 RPM. Or 0.63 seconds, something like that. There's, there's every time that pedal comes around, every 0.65 seconds. Um, so 160 RPM would be one second, would be the period. And so 95 is 0.63 seconds. So that makes sense. Okay, anyway, so we can get the, if we can get a bike frame to stiffness to match, or to have the stiffness and its fundamental period match that of a pedaling stroke, then you could get to what is called resonance. Resonance. So a frame that's too stiff is going to be fighting against you, um, and a frame that's too flexible is out of phase with the input, and it's also fighting against you. So you want to get, just like this chart here, if the frame's too stiff, you're on this, this end of the spectrum. If the frame's too flexible, you're down on this end of the spectrum. And so where you want to be is somewhere right in here. And then this, this particular model happens to be right at one second. But for a bike, we want to be closer to 0.62, which would be right around here. That would be the optimum frame stiffness would be to come up with one with a period of vibration of 0.6. So anyway, I just thought that was interesting discussion. I just wanted to shed my opinion on it. Um, so if you guys have any more thoughts, if I left something out that you're interested in learning more about, um, let me know and I'll see if I can answer it. If not, maybe I can point you in the right direction. Um, but until then, don't just go out and buy the stiffest bike because they say stiffer is better. Anyway, uh, that's my video for this evening. Um, let me know. If you have any comments, be happy to answer them, and I will hopefully see you soon.